Professor Dave and Chegg here, we should remember a few things about enthalpy, and in particular, the change in enthalpy associated with a chemical reaction. This is associated with a concept called bond dissociation energy. Let's get up to speed on some concepts in thermodynamics as they apply to organic reactions. We know that when a reaction releases energy, it's called exothermic, and delta H is negative. When a reaction absorbs energy, it's called endothermic, and delta H is positive. But in each case, we are talking about bonds breaking and then new bonds subsequently forming. Let's talk about the energy required to break a bond, which is called the bond dissociation energy, represented by the letter D. We can think of this as the energy required to promote homolysis of a particular covalent bond. Every bond will have a different bond dissociation energy depending on the identity of the two atoms participating in the bond, since the polarity of the bond is a factor in determining its strength, as is the bond length. Here are some examples of bond dissociation energies. In methane, a CH bond has a D value of 439.3 kilojoules per mole. This is the energy that must be supplied per mole of methane molecules for homolysis to occur in one CH bond per molecule, yielding a methyl radical and a hydrogen radical. Conversely, this is the energy that would be released when a mole of methyl radicals terminate with a mole of hydrogen radicals to form a mole of methane. Because exothermic reactions result in products that sit lower on an energy diagram than the reactants, it means that over the course of the reaction, weaker bonds are replaced by stronger bonds. For an endothermic reaction, stronger bonds are replaced by weaker bonds. Here we can see a table of bond dissociation energies for a wide variety of functional groups. These will span a wide range of energies and will depend heavily on the elements involved, whether those are hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, halogen, or otherwise. It will also depend on different types of carbon, the different hybridizations possible, whether resonance is involved, and a variety of other factors. We do not need to memorize these values, but it will be useful to know how to reference a table like this in order to say something quantitative about the energy associated with a particular reaction, when specific bonds are broken and other bonds are formed. With that, we understand the concept of bond dissociation energies and how they relate to the energy exchange in a reaction, which gives us an enhanced understanding of reactivity. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.